president Haka Inde Ichilema to come and address us now. Your Excellency, sir. Please do take your seats. You may take your seats, please. Thank you very much. I just wish to first say God is good and all the time because that is his nature. Yes, let me acknowledge the chairman of the Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia, uh, our brother, Paul Msusu. Let me acknowledge the executive director of the Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia, Bishop Andrew Mwenda, our colleague, where is he? Oh, over there. Let me acknowledge the past chairman of the Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia, our brother, Bishop Joy Makando. I'm aware that I have my colleagues from cabinet and provincial minister that are here, members of parliament, but also really, really to express our delight and our appreciation to have in our midst um, other church mother body leaders and other churches as our board of Christ is one. It's very important that we understand that the board of Christ is one. Um, Thank you very much, Bishop Banda. Uh, this man and I come a long way, very, very long way. Most people are unaware of that. And we were young boys when we, our paths crossed. And we are still here together, doing different things, but positive things for the country from different angles. I think it's important that uh, we understand that as a country, that um, we may be doing different bits and pieces, but they all come together as one package. And I think once we recognize that, we will make our lives easier and do good for society and for our fellow citizens. I want to express my delight to be a Midist. Um, many, many clergy from different churches, I repeat that. I was talking of the churches, representatives, but just the clergy and the general membership and other colleagues in the public sector central government, local government, media that are here, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I am very, very, first and foremost, very, very delighted to be here, uh, to be part of this celebration, um, to congratulate the Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia for your 60th, our 60th anniversary. I think they deserve a clap from all of us. If you were a kid, you got born, and you grow up to 60 years, you will have fully matured. So the Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia, we can safely say, has fully matured. Um, listening to the history as given by Bishop Mususu and indeed the executive director and also sandwiched and really reminded me of where this country is coming from and what the EFZ has been able to do, Bishop Imakando. The sort of things you were highlighted in the 90s, in fact, started in the late 80s, the issues that you talked about here. And this, this is very important for younger people in this country. Um, sometimes we take things for granted. Uh, the things that were happening in the late 80s, the, challenges of the economy, society, uh, decline in many, many areas uh, in the late 80s. And running into the 90s, 91 was sort of the climax. And we want to express our appreciation to all of that the Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia was able to do to piece the country together, patch the country together when it was easy to break the country. So thank you once more. I think the Evangelical Fellowship deserves a, a round of welcome or appreciation. I am aware that 
many of the freedoms that we experience today, many were not available before 1991. And I know for the younger population, they say, what is he talking about? What is the HH talking about? That is true. That is very true. Do a bit of reading. You will realize that these freedoms that we enjoy today were not there. And were it, were it not full, the church mother bodies, were, 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 were it not full, the courageous men and women that understood the challenges of the time, this fellow speaking here, would have never, ever been head of state in this country. And I'm very much aware of that. I'm very much aware of that. And I think it places an obligation on people like myself and others to do good for society as much as possible, despite the challenges. Challenges will always be there. So let me take this opportunity to once sort of step aside again to thank the leadership of the church not the church the churches this mother body the churches under this mother body and the leadership of this mother body who were flexible to allow me to be part of this celebration and yesterday i was in chiengi and that was a long-standing appointment with the lovely people of chiengi Luapula. And we made a request to the church to adjust this celebration to today. And the church was flexible. Church mother body, church mother body was flexible enough. Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity, allowing us to listen to the homily, to listen to the message, wonderful message that has been delivered um, through the preaching, but also through the music. I love gospel music myself. Let me come back to what I decided I would say today. Evangelical Fellowship's commitment to faith, to God, to service, commitment to the community. And I don't mean one particular community. Yes, within the churches that follow, fall under the Evangelical Fellowship, but the broader community of our country, Zambia. In many ways, evangelizing, yes, supporting those who are in need in the education sector, in the health sector, and in social support, supporting the weak, the different abled, the old and many other vulnerable in our society. This church mother body and its members have been there. Some roles, some services which should be purely the domain of government, some would say, the mother body has been there. Where I sit now, I understand the complexities of serving the diverse needs of our country. And that resources, the resource envelope is never sufficient. But because the EFZ and other church mother bodies and other churches are playing their part, we as a package, government and EFZ and other other bodies, other churches, other partners, some of whom have said a few things here, we provide again this total package to meet the diversified needs of the people of Zambia and beyond. Thank you to EFZ and to others. This is a true reflection of the partnership the partnership which we are. And I've said to many people in this country that it depends on how your brain is framed, how it's, its logical processes work inside God's gift called the brain. You could easily see everyone else out there 
who doesn't do what you do, who doesn't work in the environment you work, to be a competitor. And I urge citizens of Zambia to flip the coin that when you figure other people out as competitors, you tend to take a negative approach. That these are after something that I'm doing all I have. Do you flip the coin and say, those colleagues are actually partners. They are complementary. Then you see them in a different light. And therein lies the positivity. And once again, I like to use the expression of partnership and team. For my sins of the past, before I became a public servant, I come from the business side. And even there, I was one of the guys that would reach out to what ordinarily would be my competitors, but bring them to the table to say, we have a big assignment here. I know I could do it. My firm could do it alone. But we need the skills, some of which are in your firm. So can we work together to provide a service to this client, which will be of quality, by just pulling together. And that time we broke the mold. My firm then, Coopers and Lyrant, would be working with Pricewaterhouse, would be working with Deloitte and Touche, would be working with KPMG on one client. And those who ran the firms, their firms together with me, running our firm, became good friends. And we changed the way we looked at each other. Sometimes storytelling helps to drive a point. And I want to encourage this church, the churches in this mother body, other mother bodies, other organizations that working together would allow us to achieve more than working in isolation. Seeing commonalities, unity and diversity, we will achieve more and will open up more things that will benefit society. So Evangelical Fellowship, I listened to your early days, your interactions. I'm, I like to call myself a good student. Whatever I'm doing, wherever I'm invited, I want to listen. I make my notes there and I reflect on them. And then even when I'm done with that meeting, I'll go back to those notes. So you learn, and today I've learned quite a lot. But look at where you are coming from. As a mother body, within the EFZ, diversity which was there. Occasions that could have led to a split in the mother body actually led to a consolidation of the mother body. I think we need to clap for the EFZ. That's the way it should be. And we all need to appreciate that. The nation has challenges. There's no question about it. The nation has challenges, challenges that have basically befallen us for a period of time. The dead challenge, when we took office, we said to the people of Zambia, this is the elephant in the room that we're going to tackle. Complicated, difficult. But today I can stand here, working together, church doing its part, professional skills of different types, kinds, doing their part, we can proudly stand here and say Zambia is the first country in the world to qualify for the debt restructuring under the G20 framework. We weren't the first in the queue. We weren't the first in the queue. We found lots of other countries. And now we are the guinea pig. The power of unity. But more importantly, the power of a sense of purpose working towards a mission. And EFZ has always had a mission. And we can see where they are today, where we are today. This is our mother body because of that sense of mission. But not just to sit around, but to work towards achieving that mission. We have many other challenges. We had problems in the mining sector. 
Wednesday, this, this coming week, this week, Wednesday, I'm going to the Copper Belt to hand over KCM, the last of the mines that were troubled or have been troubled for 10, 15 years. And that will give the Copper Belt a new lease of life, given our agenda, where we want to go. We walk towards the 3 million tons of copper in 10 years' time. I can see that myself. Others, when we said it, we say it's not possible. There we are. All of this is in the service of the people of Zambia, together with EFZ, CCZ, ZCCB, New Apostolic Church, my own church, SDA, other formations, like the lady who came here to speak about her formation. We hone in together. We go to a place of convergence from different angles. That's the beauty of us, God's creatures. We are able to do those things even when it looks impossible to do that. Could we do this without prayer? Without the leadership of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God himself, could we do it? Not possible. I keep on saying to Bishop Imakando when I come here, you didn't put up all this out of confusion, out of haphazardness. You had a clear vision, mission of what you wanted to achieve together with your team and bread of life. Things don't happen by chance. They don't. They don't at all. I watch on social media what these young guys are posting. They begin, we begin to think that you can actually be what you want without doing anything about it. It's not possible. So thank you, Bishop Imakando, for hosting this 60-year birthday in your beautiful church, Bread of Life, <laughs> Blessing Center. This is our church. This is our asset. It was just put together by he and his team, but it's a national asset. That's my frame of mind. I think that should be broadly our frame of mind. Yes, we can't force each other to behave in a certain way, to act in a certain way, but generically, that's the way we should do things and value each other that way. And the country will be better, we will save our people much better, without question. I just want to say we, as government support the Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia, other church mother bodies, those churches that are not any, any mother body, as we were taught, they pray in their own way as they deem fit, praying to one God. That's important. So you have our support in the evangelical mission, in serving souls, but in education. It's a perfect fit. Our free education policy is a perfect fit, executive director. And I encourage evangelical fellowship and the churches that fall under this mother body to draw the facilities that government makes available such as the free education to encourage children in our church, in our mother body, in our churches to go to school, parents to send their children to school. It's very important to draw the EFZ and the member, church member, members or various churches to utilize facilities such as the CDF, the Constituent Development Fund. These are community funds. They are not meant for government institution. What is a government institution? It's you. It's the people in this church motherboard, in the bread of life, 
in the North Mid Assemblies of God. These are the citizens that who put us in office. These facilities belong to them. I emphasize this issue because I have been observing there's a little bit of distortion that there is a perception that the CDF is not available for church mother bodies and their constituent churches and members. Not at all. The church, the schools you run, you run. The government must supply teachers as much as possible. The health centers that you run, the government should be able to supply a doctor. Because that is an institution serving the people of Zambia. How is it that a school built by a constituent member of the Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia would have no clean water when CDF can provide a bore, tank stand, a tank, and a solar pump in the remotest part of the country where the church, particular church, is serving community? Why should it not be the right thing to do to go to CDF to say, we need a, a bore here, Father Chikoy? We're not different from each other. We're not creatures that have come from nowhere. <laughs> you, the, you are the ones who put these creatures into public offices. Please forgive my language. Forgive my language. I'm thinking scientifically. I'm thinking scientifically. So really, I thought that this is an opportunity for me to deliver this message. Executive director, chair, past chair, all my colleagues there, I want to ask you, I always make an ask myself when I have an opportunity to speak. Let's encourage our church members to be productive. Hmm. You've heard me. Church members must be productive. I'm making a call. Church members must be farmers as well like me. They must produce some food so that we can assure food security given the drought that has afflicted us, the worst drought in living memory. Church members must irrigate something. Many of them live on small holdings. Many of the people in this gathering. And we use our small holdings, five acres, ten acres, as just residences. President Kagame said to me, hey church, you guys need a whip from me. Because we have no land in Rwanda. I hear you guys live on a 20-acre farm as a pure residence. And no, and no vegetable, no maize, no nothing on a 20 acres. Look at Rwanda. We were in Kigali together. Look at these hills. It's a land of a thousand hills. That's what they call Rwanda. But you have beautiful land. I took him to Livingstone also when he visited us. He says, this Victoria Force, how much value are you earning from here? I looked down. I knew his next question. I would like the church to encourage the members to be productive. <laughs> members to work hard. Our children, choir members, everybody. That is a collection of our 20 million people in our country and the government will support agricultural credit for example FISIP agricultural credit this year we are giving all the chiefs fertilizer packs so that the chiefs can lead by example and produce something in the chiefdoms and subjects can see that the chief is not waiting for gifts of kabunga but has farmed produced something I thought I should make that abusive call, if I'm allowed. I know there was a message. He or she who speaks for a shorter period will be invited again. <laughs> I took note of that. So, I bring myself to a close. But before I do so, I want to reinforce a message here that this country 
shall remain a Christian country. This country, Zambia, shall remain a Christian country. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? I hope everybody has heard. Before you sit down. And this country will not support negative and unnatural sexual practices. That's it. We must not be shy to say what we believe in. We are Africans. We don't support those things. We are Christians. We don't support those things. I thought I should say it loud and clear here. You may take your seats, please. So, we pray to God that He will give wisdom to those that are superintending over the litigation that you talked about. The God will shine a light so that no one who is given an opportunity to save Zambians in that row, on that bench, in that court, will create a complication for us. Because we are clear in what we want as a nation. I don't know how many times I've been saying this, but we shall not tire. And I ask all of us not to tire. Do we get tired to sing our hymns? Do we get tired to read the Bible verses? Every time we read these verses, we feel they're new. And we can relate with them. Real life situations. See, colleagues, let's focus our resources, our brains, our time to tackle the economic and social challenges we have. Some things we should not be taking time. Time is money. Repeating the same issues, same arguments. No. One day I whispered to somebody what I did when I had a dignitary who visited me. And I said to that dignitary, if you say these things outside there, where we are addressing a press conference, I will differ with you because we don't agree in, with those things you want to talk about outside there. Those in government know what I mean. And which incidents was that? They know. And those things were never said. And I said, on a scale of 10, we are friends, we share common values, but on this one, we differ. But we remain friends. But we re I'm not joking. We remain friends. Isn't it? If we agree on seven out of ten things, are we not good friends? But we also respect the three things we have differences on. Isn't it? In a professional and mature way. Let me ask the church a service here. The church here who are present here at this occasion, Evangelical Fellowship, 60th birthday, the mother body, CCZ, this mother body, CCZ, ZCCB, other, other churches. We need to tackle certain things in our country. And I thought that I must also make an ask. The issues around divorces, too many divorces taking place in our country. Can we work together to bind families together? Bind us together, Lord, so we can raise families whose children will have values in our country. So I ask EFZ, EFZ 
and others. And this particular service, and through the media. The next ask I make, gender-based violence, becoming a cancer. And before it was men abusing women. Today, it is that plus women abusing men. It is not a joke. And sometimes men and women abusing children or those that God gave us but live with disabilities. That is true also. We need to work together in this area. The third ask in this area is that there is excessive abuse of social media where they will write things about Bishop Mususu, Bishop Imakando, our executive director, Father Chikoya, Bishop Banda, things that don't exist. They've never existed. And then that article garners a lot of traction, retreats, re, what do you call it? Retweets, retweets. And the negative stories are retweeted even more than the factual stories. Falsehoods can destroy a nation. See what's going on in Kenya? See what's going on in Nigeria? See what's going on in the UK? And I want to thank the new British Prime Minister. Because of his past, his former DPP, Director of Public Prosecution, Sir Stem, and is clamping down on the abuse of social media. You don't want to break society. I'm not talking about media freedoms here. Don't misunderstand me. I'm talking about abuse of the social media. Falsehood. Most of the day we are busy correcting stories that are posted that are not true. Look at that energy we are expending. We could use it to take care of someone in need. Isn't it? I believe we agreed on these matters. We are talking about abuse. We are not talking about freedoms or limited, limit, limiting freedoms. No. And I want to conclude by saying, working together is a beautiful gift. Loving each other is a beautiful gift. Talented differently, all of us. I say to my ministers, we're talented differently. We just have to respect each other's talent. But ultimately, we have a duty to save the people of Zambia. Inadequacy of one minister is not an excuse not to save the people of Zambia in that ministry because they can confer with another minister, with a permanent secretary, with one of the church specialists. How did you build this church, this building? Different specialists, isn't it? Drawn some from within the church. When he was building here, Bishop Imagan, I came here and he took me up. That's that corner, isn't it? We went up that corner. He says, oh, this engineer is from the church. This one is from outside, but this one is also from the church. And I looked at him and I said, great. So let us better our country. I encourage the EFZ to remain strong, focused, 60 years. I said you have matured, but you have just started. You have just started. All the good things you've been doing, we commend you, we support you, we are with you. And I was thinking, as the invitation and the alteration of my, our attendance was allowed, I said, what, what are we going to say? I decided I'll say these things. So what are we going to do for the EFZ so that we can show support? I said, okay. I am a productive-oriented person. That's how God made me. Less consumption, more production, more investment, you will always consume. I hope you have heard me. If you front consumption bigger, production is lower, you will run into a problem. It's a matter of time. So I thought EFZ at 60 years old 
I will do what I was born into doing. We would like to gift EFZ a small seed capital of 21 heifers. 21 heifers. I know some are saying, what's the heifer? 21 female cows, female cattle. 21 female cattle. Pretty stop. But because we need to produce, these need to produce, we ranchers know the ratios. So 21 heifers can be serviced by one bull. So in addition to 21 heifers, one bull. That's the ratio. One bull can save up to 30 heifers. So 21 heifers, female cows, just getting to the age of breeding, and a bull. Please, they are not for consumption, they are for breeding. They are for breeding. You may take your seats. <laughs> they are for breeding. So I do believe you will find, Executive Director, Bishop Mususu, you will find a home for them. But wherever the home is, we will deliver them for you. Just tell us where the home will be. We will deliver them for you. And we would like to monitor this. After five years, we'll be peeping to see how they are doing. We'll be peeping to see that. So it's a little seed capital. I know we make other contributions, um, but I love a symbol, life, multiplication, seed. That is the culture we would like to see in this country, seed. Then we can consume in perpetuity. So, happy 60 years anniversary. And wish you many more returns. May God bless the EFZ and Zambia. Thank you very much. Thank you. May I ask uh, the board to join you in cutting the cake? Board members, if you please, uh, to be joined by our host, uh, Bishop Joey Makando, and uh, the preacher of the word, uh, Bishop Harrison Sakala. Board members to join uh, the head of state in cutting off the cake together with our host and the preacher of the word today. Please proceed. And the ladies that are helping in cutting off the cake, please uh, position yourself. The ladies are behind. Uh, those two will help. So the message on the cake is Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia 60th anniversary and uh, quoting Psalm 133 verse 1. Behold how good 